2015, 2014, 2015, he mounted a one-man protest in front of the chambers of the Attorney General, Anil Nandalal. Courtney Kwame was there um, protesting daily. And what was he protesting? He was saying that Nandalal should um, resign because of allegation that had surfaced with a conversation purported to be his voice um, with Kaicho News, a report of Kaicho News, where threats were um, made and the voice was even at one stage soliciting um, or using the reporter to whom he was um, talking to to solicit sex for his uncle or some relative. I remember that well, I remember listening to the thing and he telling the man, a lot of expletives were used. The voice that was set to be that of the um, Attorney General. Assistant Police Commissioner is exposing the Attorney General, yes, and in Nandala for the unaliving of Kwame E. Wing. Mm -hmm. You need to hear and listen this exclusive video. This whole story starts back with Kwame E. Wing because this is going to be five years after. And this whole thing start up with Andy Nandalal because he was caught on a videotape with a reporter from Kaicho News making some damning allegation. Yes, so listen to this exclusive Assistant Commissioner of Police, former exposing the Attorney General. You need to hear this. Please smash the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section. Check out this video. I use my language carefully. The voice using all these expletives was said to be that of uh, Anil Nandalal. And they may be telling the man, look, you must erase because your uncle won't lash the thing. That is, that is the, almost the exact words that he used. Your uncle won't lash the thing. Very vulgar indeed. So Courtly Kramiwing decided to mount a one-man protest in front of his office because of that and other allegations. He was there. Um, for weeks, he mounted a protest. And then he moved, I remember in 2015, I think the elections, um, general and regional elections were held in April. So then Kramiwing moved to Diamond, where he was calling on people in the area to vote out the then PPP government. He was there protesting. And um, people rolled up on him, shot him. Some reports said five times, some said three times he was shot and he was killed. Now, let me show you the photograph. This is what um, this was Kwame Wing protesting, yes to democracy, no to class, race, uh, domination. This is on the left, with him there with this placard, and on the right, in the yellow, there is Courtney Kwame Wing, the deceased Kwame Wing, lying on the street with his bullhorn on the road, right? So, uh, the, 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 the thing is that there were several suspects in this matter, including the now Minister Kwame McCoy. And let me read what this um, article said. This is article February 18, 2016. It says, and the headline is Kwame McCoy detained in Kwame Wing murder probe. It goes on to say, I profile People's Progressive Party member Kwame McCoy was yesterday detained by the police and is, current, and is currently in custody as the probe into the murder of political activist Kwame Kwame Wing continues. This article is dated February the 18th, as I said. His arrest came after a, another of the party members, an attacking of a PVP. Jason Abdullah, Sean Hines, and another man were taken to custody by ranks of the Criminal Investigations Department on Monday in relation to the same matter. Crime Chief Weldon Blanham yesterday confirmed McCoy's arrest. He said that ranks of the CID went to Diamond, East Bank Demerara, yesterday to arrest McCoy, but he was nowhere to be found. However, he later turned up at CID at the quarters, Ivlery, and was detained. Let me read some more of the article for you to understand what transpired. On August the 7th last year, that was August the 7th in 2015, Regan Rodriguez, Carl Grayboy, was charged with Crummy Wing's murder. After ballistic tests carried out on an illegal .32 caliber gun found that Rodriguez's Georgetown residence linked it to the murder scene. He was also charged with illegal possession of gun, of the gun and ammunition. A gray boy was a man who, well, he lived around somewhere by the Rhinevelt police station and um, police said that they found him in possession of an illegal firearm and they said the ballistic checks 
on that firearm linked Grey Boy to this crummy wing um, murder. That is what the thing is saying. They go on to say on January 11, that was January 11, 2016, Grey Boy was freed of the gun and ammunition charge following a trial. The article goes on to say Rajput Narain, listen to this carefully, students. Rajput Narain, the ex bodyguard of former Attorney General Anin Nandalal, was also taken into custody on August the 7th last year and questioned what was released without charge. And it says here, um, well, they, they're, they're telling you how Kramiwing died. Kramiwing was shot dead on the evening of March 10, 2015, at Diamond East Bank, Demerara where he was urging residents to vote against the incumbent PBPC at the May 11th general elections. He was shot five times, including three times in the head. For weeks prior to his death, he had held a one-man protest outside Nandalal's office, calling for his resignation over controversial statements he made during a telephone conversation with a Kaicho news reporter that was made public. The PPP in a statement issued following Abdullah's address. Can I remember Abdullah Jason Abdullah was one of the men arrested. He had some connection to Freedom House. And therefore, the PPP issued a statement saying that following Abdullah's arrest on Monday, as said that ranks of the Ghana police force took him into custody for unknown reasons. It said he was taken from he was taken to the CID headquarters and was being moved around in suspicious fashion. And that is what they said about that. Now, curiously, to me, it was curious to me, and there's an article here, even before that one, in 2015, following the killing of um, Kwame Wing, there was this article that says, it headlines, this article, I news, I news article of July the 23rd, 2015. The headline is, Nandala says he's he hired unknown bodyguard after crumb wing after crummy wings murder so now the headline is saying that nandala is saying that he hired a bodyguard an unknown bodyguard after the murder and here quickly let me read what he says mere hours after report surfaced that his former bodyguard rajput narayan was arrested in connection with the gunning down of political activist Courtney crummy wing former attorney general anil nandal has sought to clear his name telling reporters that he hired rajput after the March 10 murder. After the March 10 murder, he said, Yari. At a press conference held at Sleep In Hotel in Unbreak Dam, Georgetown on Thursday, July the 23rd, Nandalal detailed that he met an old acquaintance while in New York on March the 12th, 2015, where the murder of Crummy Wing was discussed and where he revealed that he needed to hire a personal bodyguard. He further noted, that the acquaintance referred him to, to his brother, Narain, whom he said is a former Kanu officer, a licensed firearm owner, and someone he Nandalal can trust. Prior to his death, Kwame Wing protested for several weeks outside the office of the Attorney General between November and December 2014, calling for his resignation following allegations of corruption and threat to journalists. Then the quote in Nandalal is to say, I was advised to get security both at my home and, body, and bodyguards. I contacted the Guyana police force and armed security from the force was provided at my house. And I was offered the opportunity to retain the person of my choice as my bodyguard. However, on the 12th of March, 2015, I left Guyana to accompany President Donald Ramatar to New York without doing so. That's what the former attorney general said. But according to Nandalal, he fired Narain after four days on the job because he was dissatisfied with his service and due to the fact that Narain was giving out Nandalal's location to other persons. Nandalal claims that he met Narain for the first time on March 15 in the presence of his driver who knew him bef uh, from before, saying that the driver knew him from before. I explained to him the task at hand and he was willing to work as my bodyguard. He informed me that at the time, he was in the employ of the Guyana Revenue Authority and I need to write the Commissioner General and request his secondment. The following day, I did so and he commenced working with me. However, this is Nandalal is being quoted here now to say, however, after about four days, I was dissatisfied with his performance generally. 
More importantly, my driver reported that he was disclosing our whereabouts to persons on his telephone. As a result, I told him that I will no longer require his services and sent him away. I took back a vehicle, which was assigned to him as a backup to my vehicle. That is what Nandalal explained. He further noted that he then requested from the Commissioner of Police two members of the Guyana Police Force as his security detail. Two officers, again, he's been quoted here to say, two officers of the force were assigned to me. They were recalled when I demitted office after I sent away, after I sent away Rajput. I wrote to the Commissioner General, so informing him. End of quote. Let me get the next piece. This thing juicy, you know. Nandalal made it clear that while Krami Wink protested from, for several months in front of the Ministry of Legal Affairs, why he was a sitting, minister, uh, sitting Attorney General, he never once interacted or spoke to, to him. Never once interacted or spoke to Krami Wink. Then he said, quote, he quoted here saying, Courtney Krami Wink was shot on the evening of March 10th, 2015, nearly two months after he stopped protesting at the ministry. At that time, I was speaking at a political public meeting. It seems like most politicians in Guyana and around the world have some link with the underworld and dealing with corruption. When this force, when the story first broke about Kwame Ewing, fingers was pointing to the Attorney General, but no kind of action was taken. No five years after, and the anniversary and the anniversary and people celebrating the life of this vocal activist people are still mentioning the attorney general name and this recording that you're hearing right now is a recent recent recording and the person who's exposing the attorney general was a high-ranking member of the Guyana police force he was also in he was in the work at the time when Pomi Ewing lost his life, get on a life. But nothing was nothing was done. We are going to continue and listen some more about what is going on with the Attorney General. Please smash the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and leave a comment in the comment section concerning Pomi Ewing. In front of the Kali Mandir at Timiri. Approximately 100 persons were in attendance. End of quote. Alibi. He denied ever threatening the political activist who was a former member of the Guyana Police Force. He's quoted there saying, I take this opportunity to deny any involvement whatsoever in that incident and to say that there is obviously an attempt to implicate me and the PPP in this horrendous act as part of a political design. I hope that the perpetrators will be brought to justice. The former Attorney General claims that he does not have any knowledge on the, on the, on the personal life of Narayan. He has no knowledge on the personal life of Narayan. This is the man who he recruited to be his bodyguard. Narayan is the second suspect to be arrested by the police as the investigation continues into the criminal murder. Police believe, here this part, very, police believe that Narayan is the one who approached the gunman and paid him to execute Krami Wing. Well, we know that if you approach a man, you pay for execute a man, you're equally as guilty uh, of the murder. That is the article published on July the 23rd, 2015. But there are several questions to be asked. The attorney general said, well, he said he had nothing to be involved. He, he employed this man. He didn't know him. He said he had known nothing but his personal life. He employed him to be his bodyguard. And four days after he employed him, he fired him because he said um, of, of, of what was told to him. He's passing out information and so on. Four days. He employed this man to protect his life. And according to him, he knew nothing of this man. Somebody tell you this man used to work at um, Kanu and the man is a licensed firearm holder. So he employed him to work with him. And then he said, he's making the point that Kramir was shot on the evening of March the 10th, 2015. Nearly two months after he stopped protesting at the ministry. And he said at that time, he was at Timiri at a political meeting. So what, my brother? So 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 what? So what? If you were in Timiri, this man was shot and killed his diamond. Does that um, by itself absolve you or anyone else from blame? I don't think so. I don't think so. So that is the background to what happened to Kromiwin. 
and how Cromwell was killed and after now the murder remains unsolved. Because I remember the same Greyboy that we spoke about earlier was charged and I believe that Greyboy was just um, thrown under the bus and he got off, I think, uh, from the matter. So I am saying to you, yesterday was the death anniversary of Courtney Cromwell Ring. And um, so I thought to refresh because, you know, we, we, our memories are shallow. Our memories need to be refreshed from time to time. We have shallow memory. Here you have the um, bodyguard for the minister was arrested and questioned in connection with this murder. You have people who work at Freedom House. Jason Abdullah was arrested in connection uh, with this murder. Kwame McCoy, who is now a minister of government, was also arrested um, in connection with this murder. And what happens? Nothing. Still waiting. Um, Kwame Wing's family think they can't form an article at the time of his death. He had three children. I don't know what has become of those children. I remember his mother and father because I spoke to them um, some time ago. They approached me and we had a conversation sometime. Very, very upset, very distraught that no one seemed to be made answerable for the killing of their son. And I also remember attending his funeral service, which was held at Parade Ground um, in Josh. So he says, folks, that was, um, that is it. And then, you know, that they say, the, the attorney general said that this man, Rajput Narayan, he didn't know him, but he, um, in, he employed him as a bodyguard. And then he dismissed him a couple of days after. And it reminds me, I think he had a driver that is alleged to have committed suicide too. You remember that? A driver is alleged to have committed suicide. Um, somebody commented and said, said 9th of March. Is it 10th of March? He was said 9th of March. It was the 9th anniversary on the 10th of March. Thank you, student, for um, that. I am not going to tell you that you're not listening. I know you listen, and I may, may have made uh, a mistake, but let me correct that. Coming in was assassinated at uh, in Tor Street Diamond on the 10th of March, 2015. And yesterday was his ninth death anniversary. So let me bring in Mr. Conway um, to give his views on that. CC? Yeah. Um, there are more questions than answers, you know. And then the AG will recruit an unknown person to protect his life. And then four days after, he, he, he fired him. You know. There are so many questions that are left unanswered. And um, maybe I hope that they will re review, review that file if, if it's still about, about, about the place. You know. There's a saying that, you know, I remember after the Jonestown massacre when 913 persons died. I was stationed in the Northwest. And I about six months thereafter, I visited Jonestown. And in the confusion, I saw there was a big signboard there on the stage. It marked, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to re repeat it, to reveal it. Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to reveal it. So we mustn't forget do, do those things, you know. There are so many murders, you know, questionable murders that took place that we just brush them under the table or we just throw the fire. But this covering murder was, was really, really upsetting. Well, all murders should be. What is the man, as we said, protesting for weeks. I remember passing him there several times in Carmichael Street. That is on the Western Carriageway. He used to be out there with his placard. Uh, by that tree, he was protesting. Protesting, calling on the Attorney General Nandalal to resign because of this conversation that was uh, revealed uh, where a voice that was alleged to be that of the Attorney General was making threats and um, and, 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 the, and the like, inappropriate behavior. So Kramiwing thought that he, it was not fit for the office, so he was protesting. And then he moved from Carmichael Street, as the Attorney General uh, indicated, and he went to Diamond, where he continued protesting. But this time he was protesting and calling on people to come out and vote, uh, vote the, the incumbent government, that is the PPP government, out of office. And somebody rolled up and shot him. They said five shots, three in the head, and um, the others. Five shots. Let me show you again. Let me show you before we move on. Um, there, there is Crummy Wing protesting. And this is Crummy Wing um, in the yellow t-shirt lying there dead. Lying there dead. And the bullhorn that he was using is here uh, on the ground. Horrendous murder. 
and nothing so far. No one has been held accountable. You have a minister, a sitting minister of the government, who was questioned in that murder. Questioned. Now, you know, there's an article which says, with where um, it was said there should be a commission of inquiry. I think the same attorney general said that there should be a commission of inquiry into Crummy Wing's murder. None was held, as far as I know, none was held. They all on to Grey Boy. And Grey Boy, for people around town who didn't know Grey Boy, well, was a junkie. Grey was a junkie about the place. I don't think I don't know if he's still alive, but Grey Boy was a junkie. And this this article says, and let me read back that part because I don't want to. That was a former police officer exposing everything, most of the thing that is taking place with the unaliving of Kwame E. Wing. So, and then fingers start to point to Annie Nandala because of the videotape and the recording. So we don't know if it's true or if it just make believe. But this is Guyanese news. Smash the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment in the comment section.